Well, welcome back to the Survivalist 2008 channel. Today we'll be continuing our discussion related to the portable HF ham setup for SHTF or backpacking and other type scenarios out in the wilds. Specifically, I'd like to cover the solar charger and the sealed lead acid batteries that we'll be needing for this project. First, let's talk about the 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries that I have purchased. I have one 7.2 amp hour and two 8 amp hour batteries which I found on eBay. The 8 amp hours were $16.49 each and the 7.2 amp hour was $39.95 which included a small 8 by 8 inch solar panel. Steer away from that as you don't really need this tiny solar panel. Stick with the battery only. All three batteries are AGM sealed lead acid and are not actually gel cells. Each battery weighs approximately 4 pounds 14 ounces and are about 6 by 2.5 by 4 inches in dimension. As seen in the photograph, I purchased a special charger on eBay that is specifically designed to charge AGM, gel, and SLA batteries. It is made by VMAX Tanks and is model number V12-3.3. It sells for about $40 and is a four-stage fully automatic smart charger. Now don't be fooled by similar float chargers that are on the market. What you need is the four stage smart charger. That way you can top your batteries off on your house current before you hit the woods. These batteries read approximately 13.07 volts on the voltmeter at full charge with no load. With the radio in receive mode, they show approximately 12.85 volts at full charge. I conducted some tests using the radio. I transmitted at low power for one minute on single sideband, received for 15 minutes, then transmitted again for one minute on low power. Then I left the radio on receive until it started to shut down due to low battery power. Overall, the battery lasted for three and one half hours. The voltage on receive was 9.40 volts, and with no load, it read 10.81 volts. I decided to recharge the battery on the house charger to determine how long that charger would require to recharge it. The battery had rebounded to 12.09 volts. I plugged in the charger and it read a charge level of 13.36 volts with two blinking lights showing a recharge level of 50%. Well it's been two hours and 20 minutes and the inside charger has got the battery all charged up to 100%. Fully charged the meter shows 13.33 volts. Now let's discuss the solar panel charger. To provide long-term DC power to a portable SHTF or a backpacking setup, it's mandatory to have a solar power that's light enough to carry, but also one that's robust and will provide a reasonable 12 volt charging current to reduce charge time. I realized that the little 8 inch by 8 inch solar panel just wasn't going to cut it. So as usual I began a search on eBay. I needed a panel that would charge my battery in less than 8 hours of sunlight. I knew if I could carry in two batteries I could charge one in the daylight while the other one was in use. I finally found this model on eBay. It's a briefcase style made by Top Ray Solar, and the eBay listing states it's self-regulated, never overcharges, and prevents reverse charging, 
and can charge 12, 18, and 24 volt batteries. It comes with three adapter hookup cables, weighs in at just 10 pounds, and is 21 by 15 by 2 inches when closed. It has a one year warranty and it costs 80 bucks and is a 13 watt unit. Now I went to a uh, online calculator and did some calculations to determine the approximate time to recharge my battery. To recharge my 7200 milliamp hour battery at the unit's charge rate of 440 milliamps, I came up with 19.64 hours at a 20% efficiency loss. Now 19.64 hours would represent a battery that is completely depleted. My radio shuts down when the battery drops 25%, so I figure that it will only take one-fourth of that 19.64 hours to recharge in full sun which is approximately five hours. The time has come for a real solar charger test outdoors. The first task at hand was to discharge the charged up battery. I hooked it up to the ham radio and left it running all night long and it finally started shutting down at 9.27 volts on receive. I disconnected the receiver and checked the battery and with no load it was reading 9.80 volts. Later before I hooked the battery up to the charger it rebounded to 12 volts at no load. Well at 7.10 in the morning the sun had just come up over the horizon and was peeking through the trees. I went ahead and set up the charging station on a card table in the yard where it would receive full sunlight from about 9 o'clock in the morning till about 3.30 in the afternoon. The charger has a stand that you can set at various angles. I set it at about 45 degrees and pointed it the direction of the sun. I decided I'd go ahead and check the voltage coming from the charger even though the sun was not completely up and the rating was between 17.97 and 18.11 volts which would have been more than adequate to begin charging the battery but I decided to wait until the sun would come out from behind the trees. I initially was a little bit worried about some clouds but they cleared up after a while. Finally about 8.45 the sun cleared the tree line and we still had a few clouds left but nothing real serious they soon went away before hooking up anything I went ahead and put the meter on the panel when the Sun was fully out it read 23.39 volts when the Sun went behind the clouds in the shade it read 21.23 volts since the information given on the charger stated that it had a built-in charging controller I went ahead and hooked up the battery directly to the charger and I bypassed a separate solar controller and regulator that I had bought on eBay. After hooking up the charger I took a reading directly off the battery and it was reading 12.57 volts. At this point in time I decided to go ahead and go in the house but come out periodically and reset the angle of the charging panel. The more I thought about it the more I wondered if 23.39 volts was quite a bit too much to be charging that battery at. The panel was still putting out 21.81 volts so I decided to go ahead and place in line the separate charge controller and regulator that I had purchased on eBay. It wouldn't hurt to have the second charge controller in line so I went ahead and put it in line and checked the voltage coming out of it and it read 21.78 volts so I was back to square one. I went ahead and hooked it up to the battery and at that point I checked the leads and it was reading 12.58 volts 
at the battery. Now it's time to just wait. All throughout the day I went outside to take readings and to reposition the panel so it would face the sun. Voltage readings were taken at the 5, 6 and a quarter, 7 and a quarter, and 8 hour time intervals. However, the battery was just not quite fully charged yet. I rechecked at the 8 and a half hour mark and saw that the three lights on the charge controller were burning indicating that the battery was fully charged. With the charge panel still hooked up I took a voltage reading and it read 13.65 volts. Then just a battery reading alone indicated 13.34 volts and I knew it was charged. To be completely certain I brought the battery down to the house and hooked it up to the indoor charger which has the built-in microprocessor and it indicated that it was fully charged as all four lights were illuminated. So basically based upon the the time it took to recharge I believe that that particular battery had been discharged between 25 and 50 percent discharge. I was very pleased with the results of the test and the particular time frame that I had chosen, 8 hours, was just about right to recharge this battery. Now in a real life test that we'll be conducting very soon, we'll probably hook up two of these batteries in parallel which will give much more amperage to the radio and also hook up the solar panel charger at the same time run them all in parallel which would really give you a lot of power to run the station so anyway I'm very happy with the AGM batteries that I've purchased I'm also very happy with the solar charger so that about wraps it up for this particular video I hope you've had taken the time to check out all the videos in this playlist regarding the portable SHTF station that we are putting together and also take a look at the video once it's completed of the actual field test out on the field. So with that, thanks for watching and as always, take care.